Incorporating fermented foods into your diet on a regular basis is one of the fastest ways to build your immune system. And in today's world, feeding and building our immune system is likely one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves. In this conversation with Donna Schwenk, best-selling author and founder of culturedfoodlife.com, we lean into and explore the power of fermented foods in building our immune system, why they're so important and how easy it is to incorporate them. Donna is an amazing human being. If you haven't met her before, you are going to love her. You're in for a treat. She shares her heart and her story of how she got started when her health was failing her and where she is today, thriving, uh, incorporating fermented foods and teaching about fermented foods. I'm Natalie Forsbauer, founder and editor in chief of Heart and Soil Magazine. Be sure to like and share this video. It helps other people see the videos, it helps with the YouTube algorithms. Subscribe to our channel. And if you haven't subscribed to Heart and Soil Magazine yet, which is all about regenerative farming, gardening, and regenerative health, hop on over to heartandsoilmagazine.com where you can grab your subscription for just $39.99 a year. Make yourself an amazing day. Enjoy the conversation. Thank you so much for joining me, Donna. I'm really excited to have this conversation with you about why fermenting is so important and how it builds our immune system, especially in today's world. It is like one of the most important things. And it's really fun for me to watch it evolve because I've known this and been doing this for like 20 years, but there wasn't a lot of research and there wasn't a lot of um, understanding. A lot of people were understand what fermented foods were or, or how important, um, you know, our gut microbiome is because we're a hundred trillion bacteria, which is 10 times the cells in the body. So we're basically a sack of bacteria walking around um, more than we are cells in the body. And they do everything. And we couldn't even breathe without them. And microbes are um, placed inside of us for a reason and all around us, it's everywhere. So um, it's one of the most important things I think to understand because mm -hmm. it does so many things that help us yeah. as well. Yeah, you know, we're uh, I love. Yeah, we're like ninety nine percent good bacteria. That's who we are. But all you really hear about is bad bacteria. You know, that's really mostly the most dominant conversation. Um, but on any given day, your body, those good microbes that you mostly are, are keeping you well, keeping you away from diseases like for instance um many times people will there will be salmonella somewhere or, or you'll touch the counter but because the good bacteria in you is so dominant it keeps you from getting that and um, it just depends on how healthy your microbiome is and um, it's an important conversation to have yeah i love it and i love all the science is coming out to support to support this really ancient wisdom yeah um tell us tell tell us how you got started in this um, it was uh, 20, is it 21 years ago? I think it was 2001. I found myself pregnant with my third child, much to my surprise. Mm -hmm. um, I was really surprised. And I was 40 at the time. And I wasn't too thrilled about the fact of being pregnant. But um, needless to say, it was, it was quite an awakening for me because um, they delivered my baby early, like eight weeks early to basically save my life because my liver was mm -hmm. shutting down. And um, I had had diabetes during the pregnancy and then it went away after I had her and then it came back. And um, I was really struggling. And I thought I'm 40 years old in 20 years, which I am now, I'll be 60. Cause back then it was like, oh, I can't believe I'll ever be that. Now I am that. And I thought, I wanna live. I wanna live a healthy life for her. I wanna raise her. I wanna feel young. I wanna feel alive. I don't want this. I was just laying on the couch taking care of her. And that was all the energy I had. And I was just miserable. And I walked around my house saying, there's got to be a better way. The help is on its way to me. It's coming. I'll get wisdom and understanding. I don't want to live this way. And it was about three weeks after I started saying that I went to a health food store and I pulled two books from a shelf. And I sat down on the couch because I was too tired to walk around. And I, when I sat down, one of the books opened to a page and it talked about this drink called kefir and I didn't know what it was never heard of it and then the other book I opened it up and it kind of 
plopped it in my lap and he too opened to a page on Kiefer. I will never forget that moment. I kind of got chills. Wow, and I have then, goosebumps. I know. And then a store employee walked by and saw me reading that book. And he said, he came over and he stood in front of me and said, that's the most important book you'll ever read. You should really pay attention. And then he just walked away. Well, then I was paying attention because um, I didn't know what this was, but I went and found this keeper in the store, took some home, started consuming it, um, started, bought both of those books, started reading about them uh, mm -hmm. and uh, started giving to my infant daughter. And she wasn't doing great. She was a preemie, so she was tiny and she had a hard time gaining weight and she didn't sleep through the night and she threw up everything. And uh, one day my husband walked into the living room and I had been giving her a little bit of kefir every day and I had been taking it myself. And he said, Donna, Kai's gained six pounds this last three weeks. And I looked at her and she had this color in her cheek that I hadn't seen before. And I thought she hasn't stood up in a long time and she's been sleeping through the night. And I was like, I wonder, it's gotta be that drink. That's the only thing I've done different. Well, it was like a few days later and I had been drinking it too along with her. And um, I was standing in the kitchen doing dishes and suddenly I found myself in the front yard filling up all my bird feeders. And that doesn't sound like a huge big deal to anybody, but it was to me because weeks before I didn't give a rip about those birds. They could get their own food. I didn't care about them. I didn't have time for that. I didn't feel good. Mm. And I remember looking around, filling up that door feeder and the grass was greener and I could hear the birds singing and my world had shifted. And there was a sense of well-being in me that I have, I don't think I've ever felt that way. And I remember that something happened to me and when you feel good, you want to give, you want to help others because something inside of you shifts and it opens up your heart and it makes you want to help others. And I wanted to feed the birds and I didn't care about the birds <laughs> before. And I remember thinking, what has happened to me? And that started my journey. I mm -hmm. wanted to find out what this was, what had happened to me. And my blood pressure had normalized, I remember. And that was, that was, I didn't understand why. And my blood sugar numbers had gone way down to normal. And I didn't know why. And kefir works on an enzyme in the gut, much like an ACE inhibitor drug. And it can uh, lower blood pressure in one out of three people. And it happened to me. And my blood sugar is normalized. And honestly, I felt so good. I just didn't know what to do. I mean, my husband was more handsome. I can remember going to the grocery <laughs> store and people would sack my groceries and I would hold myself back from hugging them because I was so, I felt this sense of joy. Um, yeah. And joy is uncontrollable. I couldn't control yeah. it because everybody was, everybody looked different to me. Everything felt different to me. And I had a gratefulness in my heart that I hadn't, hadn't had. Oh, man. Not like that ever. Mm. And yeah. that was the beginning of the journey for me. And then I told myself, I wasn't going to tell anybody because it was so weird for many. It was so weird. That didn't work out very well. <laughs> so, but anyway, my friends started getting better. And, and I landed here with just uh, thousands of people around the world drinking kefir and getting better. Yeah, it's so powerful. Clearly, you can tell it's very moving to me. I just love... I love hearing the stories of people's awakenings to health and well-being and joy and just all the different pieces and parts that open up, right? right? Because we don't realize how much pain we're in when we're, when we're in poor yeah. health or when we're struggling, whether it be emotionally, mentally, physically, or spiritually. And then um, as our body comes to life, all these other pieces and parts, yeah, open up and it changes everything. Yeah. And I really don't want people to go through life not just live, not really living. Yes. You know, they may not know what it's like to feel good. I certainly did. You don't know how mm -hmm. bad you felt till you feel good. Yeah. I don't think most people know how good they could feel. Yeah, and that's so true. It changes everything. I wound up with a website, three best selling books. I do podcasts. I never in a million years thought I would do this. I skipped English class in high school, paid my sister to do it. And, and then here I you are writing books, which should have paid attention. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? But it was like, I didn't know that buried beneath all that pain was the hidden treasure that I didn't know about. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know I liked to write. I hated writing when I was younger. But you remove the pain and you remove the sickness and you get more energy and all those hidden treasures come bubbling to the surface because we all have gifts everybody has a gift 
um, yeah. that we all help each other. And mm -hmm. never in a million thousand years did I think it would be microbes that I would fall in love with bacteria and microbes. But it was the and here you to are, my, you know, to my prayers. And so if it, and that's how it came. It came in the form of food and microbes that sat on my counter and fermented my foods. And then they made me well. So I paid attention and uh, that's what happened. And now you dive into it all the time. So Donna, tell us, tell, let's, let's um, tell us about how microbes play a role in building our immunity and why fermenting is so important and how it dances with our gut biome to actually change, um, to actually wake up our immune system. Right. Well, your immune system is, is, has these special little tools inside of you that, that work to help you. And you have, um, you have T cells, you have A and B cells, they all, you have all these tools that alert when there's like a foreign invader, for instance, a virus, and your body sees it. And you have a, ones that alert the body and you have ones that go after and kill it. And you want all of these helpers in your body. And the way to get more of them is to have more good bacteria. Mm. Because the more good bacteria you have, the more helpers you have these T cells that go after, they have an alarm system. They're like an alert force that scans the area and looks for them. And then they have the ones that go out and kill the, kill the foreign invader, the pathogen, the virus, whatever it is. And so the more good bacteria you have, the more of these helpers you have that go after and fight and fight for you. I mean, here's the thing. We have 100 trillion bacteria, but that, all they care about is you. They, they're only here in you to support you and help you. But if you're killing them every two seconds with antibiotics and everything else and not building up the good bacteria, and for the record, I'm not against antibiotics. I think they can be very necessary, mm -hmm. but I do think we need to replenish our gut microbiome and keep it healthy. So, um, and I think they're overused, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. most people don't understand how to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand how miraculous their body is and how miraculous their immune system is. I mean, if it sees something, a path, it takes a snapshot of that. It remembers it. And it's like, okay, we're going to, we're going to remember this. We're not going to, we know how to fight this now. So we're not going to let this happen to her again. And it does it over and over and over. And most of the time it does it without you knowing it. You know, it's, it's fighting on your behalf. And nobody's talking about building up the immune system. That is so miraculous. It does so many things. It controls, it controls so many things in your body that you're not even aware of. Mm -hmm. um, but we're just, we just don't have the wisdom and the knowledge for it because it's, it's something that nobody's really talked about. Yeah, that's so true, Donna. When I was, um, the first time I learned really about the immune system, I was about 20 years old. I had been in a car accident, had a concussion wasn't getting better, was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. And, um, and I subsequently went to a support group with, for people with chronic fatigue syndrome. And I had never met such um, people who felt so defeated in my entire life. You know, people who felt like they couldn't hold their daughter or son on their knee because uh, it, they were too heavy. It was too painful. People who couldn't make it from their bed to their ensuite washroom in the middle of the night without support, like it, and, and, and in excruciating pain. And I mean, I was in pain. I couldn't raise my right arm over my, like above my shoulder. And I had, um, like chronic fatigue and I was sick all the time and I wasn't getting any better. I was getting worse. And it was really frustrating. And when I went to my doctor, he said, um, Natalie, he said, uh, we, one of the things he said to me is I had to build my immune system. I'm like, I have to build my what? <laughs> and even though I was born on and raised on an organic farm and, um, I had been really healthy all my life. Uh, there was something that happened that really, uh, disconnected my, my health and my immunity. And then that's when I learned to take agency in the, my immune system. And I, and, and that was, uh, 30 years ago. And it amazes me that it's still not part of the conversation. It amazes me that uh, people are still unaware of like all the things that we do that are actually hurting our immune system, right? That are making right. it weaker. So the chemicals in our environment, the chemicals on our food, like you said, the antibiotics, um, just the toxins in, in general and the way and the processed foods that we eat. And so we're, there's all these things that are coming in, in, in to our body and coming at us. Right. And there are also these incredible tools like right. fermenting that can uh, right. supercharge, like really supercharge our immunity. 
Well, and one of the most important things too is not just like I like probiotic foods because they work better than probiotics, I believe. Mm-hmm. Like probiotics can open up the parts of the body they shouldn't open up in like small intestines. Mm-hmm. You've got a whole other problem going on. Whereas you, if you put it in food, if it's in food like yogurts and kefirs and cultured vegetables and kombucha, things like that, um, it has a protective halo around it. So it goes to mm-hmm. the parts of the body where it's needed. It's, it's ingested in a way the body understands. Mm-hmm. And um, I tried supplements for years and I'm not against some of them, some of them were okay, but they didn't really work and they were expensive. But I yeah. saw immediate differences the minute I started with culture foods. But it wasn't just about the probiotic, it's about the prebiotics, which is fruits, yeah. vegetables, seeds, grains, nuts. I mean, all those things feed the microbiome. And yeah. without feeding the microbiome, it doesn't grow and multiply. Mm-hmm. So diet is powerful medicine for your body. And you can change it so fast by what you eat mm-hmm. that it can be astounding. Now, it also clean house. It will get rid of the things that in your body that aren't um, helpful for you because if you feed your microbiome and it grows, let's say let's say you eat a salad every day, you're feeding your microbiome in a powerful way. If you have leeks, leeks are one of the most powerful prebiotics. Um, even lightly cooked leeks. I mean, they all do this thing that just within a meal they can start to feed that microbiome and bacteria likes numbers. So when it has numbers, then it goes after and goes after the pathogens and says, okay, so this is really cool that a lot of people don't understand. Everybody talks about killing candida, right? Mm-hmm. Well, candida is a yeast in the, in the body and it has a place in the body. It's to mm-hmm. digest heavy metals that your normal digestive system cannot handle, but it belongs in a small portion of your body back in a corner, okay? Mm-hmm. The more good bacteria you have, the more you keep that in balance because it crowds it crowds it out, pushes it to the corner. Now, as soon as you take an antibiotic, it wipes out that good bacteria and then candida grows like crazy, takes over its boundaries, and then you start having problems. You don't want to kill it completely. You don't want complete elimination. You just want a lot of good bacteria in your gut so that you keep those things that are supposed to be over there on the corner, in the corner, doing their job, but not out of their out of their limits and expanding and going places where they shouldn't, where they can wreak havoc on you. And that's true for a whole bunch of different good bacteria and good yeast, because we have good yeast too. And people don't understand that by keeping everything in balance, whether it's building your immune system, keeping candida in check, or keeping other things in check, um, the more good bacteria you have, and you do that by feeding it good vegetables, fruits, things like that too. And we have specific things that we, we feed our gut that really can like impact us in a day. And mm. um, I mean, if you eat, I mean, your cells, your body are made of what you eat. Mm-hmm. So what are you eating, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's. It's so important. It's yeah. an important conversation because people don't understand. And they think that they're going to be on some weird diet. But you start <laughs> eating and changing your food and your diet. And you start craving those foods that you're eating, whatever it is, whether it's bad or good. That's Your right. gut microbiome will make more of those type of, of um, bacteria that crave those foods. And it, it even happens with alcohol. And I didn't know that, but you can get microbes that love alcohol if you drink a lot of alcohol. Mm-hmm. And if you can do it, if you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, your body starts craving that. It takes a little bit, it takes a few weeks, but it does do that. It and does. then it's not hard to do anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Yes. Like feed it sugar and processed foods and those are the microbes that you're going to have that are going to crave those foods. Kind yeah, of. it is it's super interesting because a lot of the times those cravings are associated just with sugar and it's much bigger than that. It's not just the sugar yeah. that it's craving. It's actually craving all the other pieces that you mentioned. Well, think about it. Your body is constantly trying to help you, right? So, okay. So mm-hmm. let's say you're just a bunch of sugar. It's like, okay, we've got to assimilate this. Yeah. We've got to assimilate this because she's eating all this. It doesn't really, for instance, if you eat a lot of sugar, it will drop your immune system by 75%. Mm-hmm. Let's say you have a big piece of cake and something else sweet. It, right, when your blood sugar gets to like, I think it was 120 points or above, your immune system will, will drop. And the reason, let me explain why this happens. Okay, so the cells of your body, um, most of the time, all these cells have 50% concentration of vitamin C in them. That's what keeps your immune system running really well. well Sugar has a very similar composition to vitamin C. So when the cells see the sugar, they suck in the sugar into the cells instead of the vitamin C. 
the vitamin C goes out, the sugar goes in, and it drops your immune system. Because vitamin C is one of the things that detoxifies you, keeps your immune system strong. But if your cells get filled with sugar, and it doesn't last very long, it can last four hours, but then, you, then you're at a risk of getting cold or flu. Because I couldn't figure out when I was young growing up why we always got sick at Christmas. I couldn't figure that out. Mm-hmm. It's because mm-hmm. we had so much sugar. Do you know what I'm saying? And I didn't understand that your body thinks that the sugar is vitamin C, so it sucks it into the cells. So then the body doesn't have what it needs, doesn't have all the vitamin C it needs because vitamin C only lasts a few hours because it's water soluble. Yeah. So then your immune system drops, then you get sick, and then your body's running around looking for vitamin C, it needs you to eat it so it can boost its immune system again. And all of those things, we don't understand what's going on inside of us but it really does help. It doesn't mean you can't have it ever. It just means that there's ways to do it to keep yourself healthy and yeah. to keep your immune system running strong without wreaking havoc on it. And then you start craving the sugar because your body's trying to assimilate it. That's right. And it's trying to get some balance. You know, it takes yes. a few days of getting off of it and then you don't crave it anymore. Yeah. So. And it, it, it's an unconscious craving too, because it's, because it's identifying it, right. It's not necessarily... Um, well, it works in the brain too. The brain, yeah, that's these chemicals that, yeah, yeah, that a desire for it. It's a whole, it's a whole system going on that people don't understand. Yeah, it's but powerful. in this day and age, people need to understand it. Yes, we've kind of gone a long time just putting band aids on things. You know, when I got, yeah. you know, high blood pressure, and diabetes, I'm like, why did I get this? Well, I know why. I figured it out. I know what it is. It's not hard. Mm-hmm. And it's most type two diabetes is curable with diet and exercise. You know, you take the sugar out of them, out of the bloodstream, put it into a muscle by doing a little bit of exercise and you don't even have to do a lot. Uh, 30 seconds before a meal drops your blood sugar, like nothing. Um, eating certain foods helps keep your, um, keep it worked really well for me with blood sugar. And I have a whole article in the science behind why that works. And um, there's just a lot of misunderstanding because people just want to band aid. They don't want to change their life by yeah. changing what they're doing. But one of my favorite quotes is by Hippocrates. And he said, before you heal someone, ask them if they're willing to give up the food that made them sick. Oh. The thing that made them sick is what he said. Yeah, it's true. It's so true. We think we, we want it and need it, but it is just, it's just a cycle. It's just a vicious yeah. little thing that's going on. I have it. And, yeah. uh, you just need a little bit of a nudge in the other direction and off your butt. Yeah. And this is so valuable, Donna. Help us understand, um, you've mentioned kefir and fermenting. And so sometimes um, we think fermenting is really hard and it's really foreign. And so I'm wondering if you could just introduce us to how easy fermenting is and how and all the different ways we can ferment because it doesn't have to just be um, sauerkraut. It can be, right. like you said, kefir or kombucha, or all the other pieces. So could you talk to that a little bit? Well, the first cultured food I found was kefir, and that was when um, I told that story earlier. Mm -hmm. And guys, I was pretty sick. So if it was hard, I wasn't going to do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So basically what you do is you take a jar, and you can use any kind of milk, be it non-dairy or regular um, pasteurized raw. There's a million different ways you can do it. And you put these little kefir grains, or I, you could also do a powder version, either way, mm-hmm. that's a little bit easier for people. Um, but you just put that in a jar with this three cups, three, four cups of milk, or whatever kind of milk you want to Put a lid on it, you let it sit for 24 hours, and then you have kefir. And then you just strain out the yeah. kefir grains and put them in new milk, or you, if it's the powder, you just can take a portion of that and make a new jar. And then you just stick it in your fridge where it will last nine months. And kefir is the most powerful cultured food because it has 50 plus probiotics in it. That's a lot. Yogurt has three to seven, depending on the brand. So that's, I just, I didn't get the results with yogurt that I got with Mm. kefir. It didn't keep my blood Mm -hmm. pressure low like kefir did. And that was because of the different strains that Mm -hmm. were in kefir that weren't in yogurt. Mm-hmm. And that was what had made the difference. And so that was basically, I mean, if you could open a jar and pour milk in it, you can make you. Yeah. So, and I have a million recipes and a million tutorials on there, my website, because if, <laughs> if it's not easy, people won't do it. Yeah. You know? And so then like the cultured vegetables is just chopping up vegetables, putting them in a jar, putting some salt in there because then it keeps them crunchy. 
And then I always use a culture. You don't have to, you can do it with just salt, depending on what you're making. And then you just mm-hmm. let it ferment anywhere from two to six days, depending on what you're, what you're making. And then those last nine months in your fridge, mm-hmm. they stay perfectly preserved because there's so much good bacteria that it keeps out all yeah. pathogens. Fermenting foods is safer than raw foods because the good bacteria mm-hmm. dominate and keep everything safe. Yes. So you don't need to worry about that. Everybody's worried about it. It's actually safer than eating regular raw food. And then with kombucha, kombucha takes a little bit longer, but it's easy. You're just making tea. Mm-hmm. You're adding the culture and you're letting it ferment. And each one of these different foods, and there's a lot of different culture foods, have different probiotics in them that do different things. Kombucha has something called Saccharomyces boulardii, which is one of the most researched probiotics um, in medicine. And it's a yeast, it's a probiotic yeast, so it can't be killed by antibiotics. But what it does is it goes inside the body and you drink kombucha and it acts like a pathogen. So the Mm. pathogens are attracted to it. And Mm -hmm. then when the pathogens are attracted to it, it steals their food, metabolites, and then they die and exit the body in a couple of days. So it's great for colon health. It's great for so many um, detoxification. It assists your liver in that. It's powerful, very powerful. And um, each of these foods do different things. That's just one of them. I could go on forever, but kombucha is just, unbelievable i see so much kombucha everywhere now when before i was the only one drinking it it is <laughs> it's amazing yeah that's so cool can i ask you a question about the kombucha yeah okay so um i was first introduced to it when, when i was in my early 20s again i was and um and it was you know it was back in the day when uh i don't i, I like we didn't double ferment <laughs> we just like yeah. oh, just it was kombucha. made in um right just drank kombucha and everyone thought I was like a little bit crazy. They, they teased me for drinking vinegar. Um, but when I was curious, when when I learned about it initially, it was really important that we used, um, uh, a black tea and, um, or, and certain types of teas, but now we see it being made with like green tea and oolong tea and white tea. And so I'm just curious if you know any of the, um, uh, the, how the different teas that we make it with influences the kombucha that well, is made most or thing, yeah well, the most important thing with the teas and you can use green tea the mm-hmm. green tea and black tea combinations make a really good kombucha mm-hmm. um white tea isn't as good and him explain why and like the herbal teas you really there's some herbal tea you really shouldn't use herbal teas because they don't have tannins mm-hmm. in it. and you need mm-hmm. the tannins in the tea leaves to make kombucha so mm-hmm. there's a lot of, and her, some herbal teas have essential oils that can kill the kombucha yeah so you have to be a little bit careful with that, but green, black, white doesn't have as many tannins, so it, it doesn't ferment it quite as well, but you can use it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can use decaf, you can use those, but the one thing that you've got to be careful of is the herbal teas, because they don't have the tea leaves, which don't have the tannins, which don't mm-hmm. make kombucha properly. Mm-hmm. And they also could have the essential oils, but I think I have, I have an article that tells all the different types of tea. One of the That's best fantastic. ones that I found is hibiscus. Oh my gosh, goodness. it makes the best kombucha. It, it does. Makes, it does. It's so good. And I love it. It's bright red. That yes. makes a really good kombucha. And I have recipes for that. Um, there's also a thing called June tea. Kombucha, June tea yeah. Kombucha. yeah. And everybody's saying that it's a special thing mm-hmm. from Tibet from a thousand years ago. And I have never found any kind of anything saying that that's true. I think somebody just made it up. So it's basically just kombucha made with honey instead of sugar because the culture eats the sugar and the honey out of tea and turns the scoby white. So people are selling these special yeah. fumed scobies for more money. And it, you have, it's just a regular scoby. You just made it with honey. Yeah, so isn't it interesting? I, yeah, people are trying to cash in on it. And I'm like, somebody said, oh, it was from ancient years, thousand years, but there's nothing. <laughs> I've never seen any research to say that that's true. So if you want to make June kombucha and you do it with honey, now just use your regular scoby in your tea and just use honey instead of the sugar and it turns into June kombucha. It's really delicious. It uh, is. It really is. So, yeah, I'm, thank you for mentioning that because, um, the, one of the, this, one of the things I love about these cultures is they are all thousands of years old and they mm-hmm. all, like you said, have different benefits and different, um, strains of probiotics. So it's, it's not necessarily that one is better than the other. And like you said, the milk kefir is, uh, 
prolific in the amount of uh, strains it has. And at the same time, there's deep value in all the different cultures. Right. Well, and it, and it, to say, like, for instance, culture vegetables have a really big probiotic that I love called lacto. Um, yeah, it's planetar. Is it planetarum or planetar? I always get it wrong. I can't remember. But anyway, mm -hmm. it's a big one. Mm -hmm. um, and it works really well. And it's also in kefir. Mm -hmm. But it's in small amounts of kefir, but in cultured vegetables, it's huge. So it does huge things because there's so much in abundance of it. And um, it is a very powerful probiotic in cultured yeah. vegetables. It's, it's one of, and I have article after article of all the things that it does. It does a lot. And right now in this day and age, just one spoonful is so important. Um, it's just, it can change the way your body reacts to everything everywhere mm -hmm. from any kind of sickness, illness. It's mm -hmm. fantastic for any kind of stomach ailment, yeah. food poisoning. Um, it actually goes after it and kills it. I, I witnessed that thousands of times, not only in my personal life, just a few, few times in my personal life, but the people that I help, that's the number one thing that I get from people. They didn't believe me until they tried it. And they were like shocked that it works so well. If you have any kind of like, if you're throwing up, vomiting, food poisoning, one teaspoon of the juice. You can even have the vegetables. Most people don't want that if they're sick. Yeah. It stops it dead in its tracks. And it's a powerful thing. Now it doesn't last very long in the body. Um, it accumulates in the body. So it, it's a transient bacteria. So it doesn't last very long, mm -hmm. but it's a really good one to have in your fridge mm -hmm. because it does so many things. I have a whole article called the St superstar in cultured vegetables. So but yeah, I love problem. all the resources you share yeah. with people. You're so generous and you're sharing, Donna. I deeply appreciate that. Oh, well, people are, you, you know what? What you put out is what you get back. Yeah. So if yeah, you're so generous and, towards people and help them, I just want them to be well. They don't feel good. Yeah. You know what I mean? The whole world changes when you feel good. Look what happened to me. It was ridiculous. So if people wind up with a website and books, it's not my fault. It's just, you know, but you feel good. You want to do that. You want to help them. It really does open up your heart and make you want to help others. Yeah. So I have so many health articles, just even on fibromyalgia, they're really good. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that milk kefir was the first one you had. I didn't, wasn't introduced to milk kefir actually, mm, maybe like 15 years ago or so. And, um, and then I, and I had a house helper coming in and she was, um, she dumped out all my cultures. <laughs> she thought they were all rotten. She had never been introduced to <laughs> fermented <laughs> foods. And I came back home one time and I was like, uh, well, yeah. what happened to this, this, and this? And she's like, uh, they're in the compost. <laughs> I was oh, like, no. oh my gosh. Well, so, happy. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> the really powerful part of that story though, is she had, um, not like IBS, but a, a, a variant of Crohn's. Yeah. And so she had the opportunity to be introduced to this, um, this new, like learning of fermenting and she was able, and milk kefir was one of the first things that she started to introduce and it totally changed her life. It yeah. totally changed her life. Yeah. yeah. I have a lot of testimonies on that. I have a page called Lives Touched and people send mm -hmm. their testimonies. And you don't have to believe me. You can just <laughs> no. go believe them or try yourself. You know what? That's the wonderful thing is that I'm the messenger. But um, yeah. once you try it and once something makes you well, you pay attention. And nobody can really talk you out of it at that point. Because yeah. you lived that experience. And that's the secret. Once people see, for, I can't tell you the letters I get. I didn't believe you until I did this. I didn't believe you until I tried. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I yeah. had every friend I knew thought I was crazy when I first started. And then one by one, they all fell and just came to uh, me. Like, okay, you were right. So it was so much fun. <laughs> to watch that. so cool. They told me I was nuts. Yeah. So, <laughs> Sorry for cutting off, Donna. The, you also mentioned um, something else I thought was really poignant is the amount of um, healthy microbes in one spoonful of a fermented vegetables or fermented food. And so, cause we spend, I'm saying we as society spend probably hundreds of thousands of dollars of on probiotics and on prebiotics. And it's not to say that don't use them. Um, and at the same time, you can actually make 
your own ferments right in your own home and they're way cheaper and they have way more uh, diversified bacteria and microbes in them. So um, I just wanted to really uh, pull that apart a little bit so people really understand that and really get that. And t- can you yeah. um, tell us like if we've never fermented before where um, you said we could start with milk kefir, if, what if we wanted to start with vegetables, where would we start? Well, one thing I want to say too is that one tablespoon of cultured vegetables or the juice, because the juice is just as powerful, Mm -hmm. has more probiotics than a whole supplement bottle, the entire bottle. And I have the thunders me saying that. People have tested that, and I have the research for it on my site that shows, Mm -hmm. you know, how they tested it. So it is, and it just works better. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're, and because I took a lot of of probiotic supplements, they didn't work for me. They didn't do what cultured foods did. Mm-hmm. So if you're interested in cultured vegetables, they're so easy, guys. Um, you can make kraut. You can make, I love, I have a tomato recipe, a cherry tomato recipe that I just put basil and garlic and cherry tomatoes and a little culture and two days on the counter. And it makes this bruschetta. Mm. Uh, this time of year, we have a sweet potato zucchini one that's to die for. Mm-hmm. We have um, a butternut squash. We have krauts, we have pickles. I mean, I think I have 370 recipes on my website of different ferments, but um, you're basically just chopping up vegetables. The simplest way to do it would be to just chop up, let's get some kraut, chop up kraut. And you need which, to is cabbage, right? cabbage, which is cabbage, right? Which is cabbage. I'm going to say kraut, cabbage. Yeah. <laughs> you can use any kind of cabbage. You can use soy, you can use regular. The regular one works really well, but you got to add salt, which is, uh, it depends. If you're going to make a gallon, you need at least um, a tablespoon of salt because it keeps it crunchy. And if you don't put the salt in, because you need it to drop the pH. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, you, and then you can add a culture to it, which I have, I sell, but you can also get them other places too. But if you want to just use salt, because you can do it with just salt, you don't have to have a culture, but you'll get more benefits if you do the other and it keeps mm-hmm. them a little bit longer, but you'll need to double the salt because mm-hmm. you need to make sure you're dropping the pH um, and salt does that. And then you just chop them all up. You can thin, thin slice them or chunky chop them however you want. Um, you can add stuff. I like to add apples to mine, a little bit of like a half an apple shredded up. Gives mm. a little bit more flavor. Or I have an orange egg crowd where I put orange slices in there just to flavor it. Any of those, and I have those recipes on my site. But, and then you let it sit in your counter for six days, six to seven days till it tastes mm. like kraut. Mm-hmm. and um and then you stick it in your fridge and then you're done and that's you're just chopping it if you can chop up vegetables and put them in a jar then you can make prep culture vegetables that's awesome and, thank um, you i i it's so simple to do it sounds every time people come to my classes that's what they say oh my gosh this is so much easier than i thought <laughs> it's the mental thing that's right uh, i'm gonna ferment these things on my counter and you know are they gonna make me sick and they're they're so much safer because the good bacteria dominate and they keep them safe so the only time I think in 20 years, I had one batch that was bad and it had a crack in the jar mm-hmm. and it, I opened the jar and it smelled so horrible. You would never eat it. You know, if it's gone, something's wrong. And I saw stuff like on it. So I knew it was bad, but that's one time in 21 years. So it's like, and that was because the jar had a crack. So it just, you know, it was a little thin one, but it was letting in a bunch of air and yeah. it had been in the fridge a while. But anyway. It's just a really fun way. I, I, I mean, I've done, I got so many different types of recipes that I make. So it's fun. It's just fun to do. And it's, the benefits are huge. And you just need a spoonful or a spoonful of the juice. The juice is just as powerful. And uh, I've really trained my family if they don't feel good, or if they have something wrong, or if they don't feel like they're digesting their food, it, it's loaded with enzymes. So it helps you digest yeah. the food you eat with it. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what I do with my kids too. I'm like, just one spoonful. Like if they're little, when they're little, they actually enjoyed it. And then they went through a phase where they actually didn't like it. I was, I'm just like one spoonful. That's it. That's all you need to do is one spoonful. Mm-hmm. And it, and uh, it, it actually did help them incorporate it into their, their meals or into their days. Um, but how often would you say that it's beneficial to eat fermented? Oh, food to build day. the immune system every day? Well, I have kefir every single day. I have kombucha almost every single day, probably. Cultured vegetables I probably have every other day or every day, mm-hmm. depends on, like yesterday we made a grilled cheese, but we put kraut in the middle mm-hmm. and it doesn't ever get hot enough to kill the probiotics because it's in the middle between the 
lives of bread, but we do stuff like that. I mean, I'll put it on, you know, I'll put it, I mix dips. Yeah. Um, I make an onion dip and I put the crowd, you just take, I have kefir cheese and you can also use other types of cheese if you want. And I just mix the crowd in there. And I swear it is the number one thing that people rave about in my classes. Cause you wouldn't think it would taste good. It's fantastic. Yeah. Have, it's, it tastes so good. You just mix it in and the kids eat it like dip. So yeah. I'd like lots. to do that too. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, so it's neat. Good. And put it into salad dressings too. Right. I, and I salad think you have lots of, yes. yeah, I have, um, I just, I do a million different things. So, yeah. but one of the things that it's so powerful because if you make the dip with kefir cheese, you're getting twice the probiotics because you're getting the kraut and you're getting the mm. kefir cheese, which kefir cheese is super easy to make. You just strain your kefir, put a little strainer in a bowl, put a coffee filter in it and pour kefir in it and then stick in your fridge and the next day you've got a hard lump of cheese in your thing. You can use it like cream cheese or yeah, it just doesn't take very long to do. But yeah, we do that all the time. So and now yeah. we're selling it in stores. I, yeah, isn't that amazing? I know, I'm so excited about I, that. Yeah. I remember when first learning about kombucha, like I said, it was so it was early nineties and, um, and I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you could actually package this and, and sell it. But back then I had no idea even where to start. And, but I did find one culture, it was cultured barley. It was fermented barley and it was from a biodynamic farm in um, Australia. And I was like, wow. how are they? Yeah, it was really, it was uh, the only cultured um, food that I could find. So now it's exciting to see all the different ways fermenting is making it on the way to grocery shelves and into people's homes and into people's daily lives. And yeah. it's, it's not so uncommon. I mean, people seem to know more about it. I mean, it's still to some people, they don't know what it is, but no. I tell you, um, the good news spreads once somebody gets better, you know, they tell other people and then they tell other people. And that's the cool thing that happened with kombucha. It wasn't really advertised. Uh, GT Synergy Kombucha, he was the first one on the market, and okay. he never advertised. I mean, That's it was amazing. just word of mouth, and it's like a $10 billion business now. So <laughs> it's kind of, and that's thrilling to me, because honestly, yeah, if we could just get rid of some of the sodas, if people would start drinking Kiefer soda instead of regular, those sodas yes. are so hard on you. They're hard on your thyroid. They're, they've got corn syrups and artificial <sighs> things in them. They're so bad for you. And I can't tell you, I've seen more and more places pop up with things, but if we could get this generation to start drinking more of those, which I think they're doing, mm -hmm. slow, it's slowly shifting a little bit because yeah. it is pretty delicious too. I mean, it is. I, I really love like kefir sodas are delicious. They, they're bubbly, they're carbonated, yeah. it's naturally occurring. It's not forced carbonation, but they have probiotic, probiotics in them that really can heal and you can feel a difference when you drink them like yeah we go to the beach we from the summer we always go to this kombucha shop there's this great kombucha shop right by the beach and we always go in there you either get a kiva soda or kombucha and i mean literally because sometimes you get you're out in the sun and you get drained as soon as i drink that about 10 15 minutes later i feel a boost i feel mm -hmm. you know you're not getting the sugar yeah. you're getting the probiotics but you're getting that bubbly flavor it's just our favorite thing to do we just which flavor are you going to try That's what yes. we with each other? But it's so good. And I, I just, yeah. I don't think people know what they're missing. It's so easy to make. It is so. so easy to make. It is so easy to make. Yeah. And the, and the flavors, oh my gosh, the double fermenting and the instant fermenting, like you even, you teach people how to make um, the water kefir with uh, just a single ferment, right? With the juices. Yeah. And on your also, website. Yeah. The second, I, the second that I mentioned, yeah, we have yeah. those. We yeah. do a lot of other things too. Yeah. We make like a kombucha float that a lot of the health food stores sell now. And I just use kefir ice cream or something and they'll put I, the kefir ice cream in there with the kombucha and it gets super bubbly. We Yum. do that. That's, it's really fun because here's the deal. You got to find replacements for things that are harmful. And yeah. soda is really bad. Soda is a big one because there's so much fructose corn syrup in it and so much stuff in it. Um, and I don't even miss that. It's been 20 years. I haven't had a yeah. soda in God. And the diet sodas are almost worse. Do you know what yeah, they are. Um, oh, I do. It's terrible. But you know, I've had, I found a replacement with kombucha and kefir soda and I just, and I don't miss it. Plus kombucha was what helped me detox from it because I was addicted to it. like diet soda. I was addicted yeah. to it off of it. And it was kombucha that got me off of it because it has 
that was back in the day when I don't know if it's still in, but it was aspartame, I think. But yeah, it, it's. Yeah, is it still in sodas? Well, um, I think it is. Well, and if if it's not, it's like a sister brother of aspartame that's in sodas, which is equally as. Yeah, and it's got hard. an incomplete amino acid that makes you crave it. Yeah. Because it doesn't have the complete amino acids you crave it. And I thought, why mm -hmm. am I craving this? And I have, I have wrote a whole article about what happened to me that finally got me to stop drinking it. This was, mm, this was right when I started making kombucha. And I remember it detoxed oh. me from it. And I never looked back. So That is so cool, Donna. Yeah, my sister-in-law has a kombucha company, Two Rolls Kombucha. And she makes such good flavors, like with the... Aww basil and blueberry and I saw that was one of I think your recipes too of the, uh, it, yeah it's so good so, so unique it has such a unique taste to it I love that one that's a really yeah, popular one. it is so, it is and people um it, I love how you encourage people just to experiment you know with all the different flavors and all the different foods and um it's really really powerful because it's it's a really safe place to learn and it's a safe place to um discover what you like, what flavors you like. And yeah. it's a great way to detox. Like you said, and it's a, probably one of the best ways to build your immune system. And it helps you keep your promise to yourself. You know what I mean? You, 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 if you take care of that body that you're living in, your life is going to be so much better. I mean, mm. it is, people think they want the convenience food. And I understand that because people are busy, but once you find little things that you can do, whether it's, you know, just replacing the soda um, you're keeping a promise to yourself and to this beautiful body that we live in that keeps us well. You yeah. just take it for granted. You know, yeah. kidneys are filtering how many gallons of, you know, blood filtering our kidneys every day and our, you know what I'm saying? I mean, all of our <sighs> the organs in our body are doing these wonderful things. And once you start to assist them, it's really funny. This happens a lot. Once you start eating better, going back, you're so much sicker. You try mm -hmm. to go back. Your mm -hmm. body, like, oh uh, no, We're not, <laughs> you get sicker than you did before because you got assimilated to it before. That's right. And then once you clean it up, um, it's harder to go back to eating bad because it yeah. doesn't like it. So, yeah, your body recognizes it like uh, that. It's different than it didn't before. So, yeah, yeah, that's powerful. And Donna, one, um, one more thing. Um, I'm, I'm a big advocate for organic, um, organically grown foods and foods grown without chemicals and really uh, supportive for people to seek that out and to grow their own food when they can. And at the same time, I live in rural Saskatchewan and I can tell you that it's very hard to find organic food here in the grocery store. I am lucky if I can find organic apples and or I can always find organic leeks and organic mushrooms, which is really kind of cool and bizarre year round. Um, but beyond that, everything else in the store is not organic. It's really hard to source it. And I know that uh, people around the world feel that way when they can't, and especially when they can't grow their own food or they don't know where to start. So, um, and then the other roadblock that comes up is, well, it's not really like, why would I even bother fermenting something if it's not organic because it's not good to start out with. And I'm just wondering how, if you can speak to that and how much truth there is in that. There is so much wonderful information about this because fermentation, especially with vegetable, well, if any of them, um, removes or um, really removes pesticides and chemicals through the process of fermentation. So it's 98.9% mm -hmm. .9 after five days, I believe. And then six or seven days, it's like 100%. Mm -hmm. And that's just not me saying that. I've got the research for it. But it does remove. So you don't, if you can't get, I think organic's better. But if you can't mm -hmm. get it, you can use regular vegetables and it's going to remove those chemicals and pesticides. Mm -hmm. That's what fermentation does. But here's the cool thing. It does it inside of you too. Yes. When you eat those foods, um, it helps to remove those toxic chemicals from you because yeah. the bacteria have what they need to help detoxify mm -hmm. you and to remove it, um, you know, through the colon. You know, mm -hmm. I know, for instance, like with kombucha, kombucha is a powerful detoxifier. When I first started drinking it, we all started smelling. I'm like, why do we all smell? I'm like, what is happening? It was detoxing us so much. Wow. That, I mean, my daughter said, I keep taking a shower. I still smell. And it didn't last very long. It was like three or four days. But it was just pulling stuff out of us through our skin, through the urine, because we were urinating more too, I noticed. Yes. And we were going to the bathroom more. And it just, and then it kind of calms down. It just, yeah. it just, it's like, okay, now we have what we need. To help you so it does it to your vegetables and to any of your products that you're fermenting but it also does it with inside of you 
it's mm-hmm. kind of cool when you think about it um, mm-hmm. that there are these helpers that we have inside of us mm-hmm. that assist us to live a healthy life, but also help us, you know, with our food sources because our food sources aren't very clean anymore. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, you know, the minerals in the ground, they're not as plentiful as they used to be. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, these foods can really assist with all of that by adding more minerals to your diet because they are, they're just powerful foods that you don't need very much of. You don't have to make a whole diet of them. I mean, I do it every day just because I just, I love it. I'm so used to it. Not used to it. I like it so much. Um, last night I didn't want to eat dinner because we he had a big lunch and I wasn't hungry. But I really wanted to try a new kefir recipe I had um, with cranberries. And it kind of, it was delicious because I really just like it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was kind of like frozen ice cream, but it was just kefir and frozen cranberries and blueberries. And I was like, this is good. I really mm-hmm. enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It's not like I'm making myself eat it. It's just, I love it. So that's awesome. And can you can use frozen fruit to ferment? Yeah. Um, or no it kind of you can make it like I do it in my smoothies I put it in my smoothies to make it thick and creamy but they kind of get mushy and fall apart so and mm. you're kind of missing the enzymes that you get right away from from fruits that are fresh I don't really recommend using frozen I mean you could in a pinch but I would recommend using ideally frozen. not okay that's good to know no it just they just get mushy because they're it's getting broken down anyway and they're already soft because they've been frozen because of the water yeah. contents and so yeah. Kind of get a mush. Do you know yeah. What I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I totally know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I've never mm, fermented frozen fruits before. I just um, was reading up on it a lot because I'm like uh, to see what people's experience is. And I've seen um, some say that you can, but more of what you just said, that just becomes kind of like mush. Mm-hmm. So you can in a pinch or it's maybe you could. And then you're ruining your fruit. That's you're not <sighs> wanting to eat it as much. So, so add them and st- add them to your already fermented foods like your yeah, smoothies like rather than using them. smoothie i always add frozen berries or mm. you know some this time of year i have frozen cranberries and blueberries okay that's my favorite thing to do and then i just blend it up so then it's a thick kind of either a smoothie yeah. or a smoothie bowl yeah i do that yeah, yeah. all the time i just really like it too it tastes really good so yeah it's one of those things that and it's easy it's fast food everybody's looking for fast food well that's fast you just that is fast. And 30 seconds later, you got breakfast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, it's people don't realize that a lot of these foods can be very fast. Yeah. You know, so it's, you know, people are looking for convenience and that's convenient. So, mm. easy to make. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time today, Don. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, just don't be intimidated by it. Mm. It's so easy. And I'm here to help. My site is everything on there is free. Um, and it's so simple guys to do. And one of the most exciting things is, is I don't have to convince you your body will. Yes. Let your, your, just find the one that most interests you, which one seems most interesting is what I tell people. And it's kombucha, you know, go buy one at the store and taste it. Yeah. 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 And they've got fermented vegetables now at health food stores everywhere. Mm-hmm. Just make sure they're in the refrigerated section and they say live cultures. You can buy keeper. It's better to make it at home, but give it a try. There's some really mm-hmm. good brands out there now that you can buy at health food stores just to try. That's you right. Know? And um, it's always better to make it at home. But in the beginning, I tried a bunch of stuff and loved it. That's and awesome. Then I doing that. So that's a great place to start. So it's not overwhelming. Yeah. And Donna, tell us where we can find you on the internet and, um, and your books, because you're, you've have some awesome books on cultured, uh, vegetables and all of them. health yeah. and <laughs> all of it, right? Yeah, like all, of all it. my books, I teach you how to do all. Of it. So, but I also mm. teach you on my website at culturefoodlife.com. And if you go to my website at culturefoodlife.com, you can even just Google Donna Schwenk if you want, yeah. and I come up under culture food life. But I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on YouTube. I've got a lot of videos. But here's the deal. If you go to my website, you'll see a little smiley pot on the menu bar. It'll say start here. Yeah. It has a drop down and it'll say kefir, kombucha, culture vegetables, sourdoughs. Got all these things that are cultured. You pick the one you want and it's got menus on how to do everything on there. You know, it's all free. It's right there. And I've got videos on there. I've got step-by-step recipes, pictures, a lot of information. Just pick the one that most interests you. 
And, you know, it's just a little smiley pot that says start here. And then you can also go get my books. They're all, one is Culture Food Life, one's Culture Food for Health, and one's Culture Food in a Jar. And they're all on Amazon and they're in bookstores and stuff. But um, any of those, you can do any of those if you're, if you need a book in your hand. Um, but I have all the information you need free on my website too. So. Yeah, Donna, your um, your um, recipes and your the way you share your information and how you make everything so accessible and simple is uh, is delicious, and I am so deeply appreciative. So thank you so much. And so, um, if you're watching this, be sure to go check out her website and her books and um, dive in. And she even has a membership site where she even takes you further into the journey and shares extra special um, recipes and information. So that's a place you can also go to connect with Donna even more deeply. Well, yeah, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. And I hope more, more people will learn how to take care of themselves. It, it's such a journey and it's so fun. And thank it you is. for sharing with people because it, it, just like with you, it can make all the difference in the world. So yeah. Thank you, Donna. Big love. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having <laughs> me on. Grateful you joined us for that conversation and interview. If you haven't subscribed to Heart and Soil Magazine yet, head over to heartandsoilmagazine.com. Click on that subscribe button and join us for just $39.99 a year. You make yourself an amazing day and I'm really grateful you're part of our community.